comparing what they have to what they see in America, wants what America has. At least that's been the case. So we want to look at, well, there, there's different things here. Let's just go, let's take it in order. We'll just start with scripture reading. This is from 2 Chronicles Chronicle 17. Just a few verses there. We'll look at that briefly and then we'll continue on what we'll get into more history. Uh, but we'll use these verses first. And Jehoshaphat, his son, reigned in his stead and strengthened himself against Israel. And he placed forces in all the fenced cities of Judah and set garrisons in the land of Judah and in the cities of Ephraim, which Asa, his father, had taken. And the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because, now look at here, remember what we're doing. <clears throat> Because he walked in the first ways of David his father and sought not unto Balaam, but sought unto the Lord God of his father. And walked in the commandments, in his commandments, and not after the doings of Israel. Therefore the Lord established the kingdom in his hand, and all Judah brought to Jehoshaphat presence, and he had riches and honor and abundance. And his heart was lifted up in the ways of the Lord. Moreover, he took away the high places and groves out of Judah. Verse 9 and 10. And they taught in Judah and had the book of the law of the Lord with them and went about throughout all the cities of Judah and taught the people. And the fear of the Lord fell upon all the kingdoms of the land that were round about Judah so that they made no more no war with Jehoshaphat. We have A through E some, some, um, some points to look at and just to briefly comprehend this a little bit more in depth. First of all, this is young man Jehoshaphat is the son of Asa. He's fifth in line from David, the king. Remember David the king, King David. Um, he, uh, you can see here, he had just taken over the kingdom. His, his father had passed on. And you can see the first thing that he does is strengthen himself against Israel. We're going back up to the verses there. We, we can see that he placed forces in all the fenced cities of Judah, set garrisons in the land of Judah, and in the cities of Ephraim, which Asa, his father, had taken. Um, Israel, most of you know this, just a reminder, though, Israel split. It was a kingdom of 12 tribes. When Solomon became king, 
That was David's son. So the second king, not him, Saul, the second king, Solomon, um, actually lost 10 of the tribes. He, he was so difficult to work with, 10 of the tribes said, we're leaving. We have nothing to do in David. In other words, the tribe of David would be Judah and Benjamin. The other 10 tribes left, and they're, they're called the Northern Kingdom. They're also just called Israel. The non-Israel would be Judah and Benjamin, with Jerusalem included there, okay? So th this is what we see here. Israel, the 10 tribes were in the Northern Kingdom constantly warring with the Southern tribes. So you have Judah warring with Israel. They're all Jews. But they have many, many differences going on. A lot of jealousies and things like that. So what had happened was, just to give you a little background, his dad, Joseph had his dad, Asa, whose name Abijah. Abijah had fought a war with Israel and killed 500,000 Jews from the northern kingdom. Then Asa came along and, and he took some cities back that were on the border. Northern Kingdom, Southern Kingdom. It's on the board. He takes these cities back. Um, and he also fights against them. There's always wars, it seems like. But then we see these verses that that's what this comes along. <laughs> Letter A physical protection in the Northern Kingdom, Israel, which from their very beginning departed from all that God had commanded. So, first thing that Jehoshaphat does is get protection from all the wars. He doesn't want invasions anymore, doesn't want the wars anymore. Um, and let's look at the, the other part of that, that sentence in verse, in, in letter A. Israel, the northern kingdom, had never, ever followed the Lord. None of the ten tribes. Now that doesn't mean individuals there did not follow Jehovah, God. But the governments did not, because what happened was their king set up two idols in the land. The reason was that he did not want his Jews in the northern kingdom to go down to Jerusalem to worship. Where had God said that you must worship me? In Jerusalem. But that's in the southern tribes. That's in Judah. And he doesn't, the northern kingdom God, Jeroboam, he does not want his people to go back down to Jerusalem to worship at the temple because he thinks a lot of them, well, they won't come back. He's probably right. They probably wouldn't come back. So that's one of the reasons for the fighting. It's a huge reason for the differences that they have. And when we see what Jeroboam has done here is part of his simply is protection, but, but the other part is this. He does not want to mix his kingdom with the idol worshipers either. Right? There's right. false worship in the northern kingdom. There's godly worship in the southern kingdom. Right? So that there's a couple reasons. One is just protection and the other is uh, the issue of we don't want to mix with you. You're not, you're not believers. Okay. So let letter B. The king did as his father David, as did his father David by seeking the ways of the Lord in all things. Now listen, this is this is huge. David is a man. Listen to the verse. This is in Acts 13. Listen to this verse. And when God had removed Saul, King Saul, he raised up unto them, the, the Jews, David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart which shall fulfill all my will. That's, that's God speaking about the man, David. What, does, what do we see in these verses in 2 Chronicles 17? We see that Jehoshaphat, letter B, did everything that his father David did. So what can we say about Jehoshaphat then? That he would, he would follow the same thing. I have found in Jehoshaphat son of David, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Okay, now this part, we're going to get to the point. Just hang in there. It takes me a while. Some of y'all know me about that. What else did the king do? 
And, and listen, it's all going to come under that banner of, of, of letter B. That he's going to fill all the will of God. He's going to follow God in all things. Jehoshaphat we're talking about. He's going to take away letter C. All places used for every form of false worship were removed. Listen, there was false worship through that area of the, of the um, world all the time. There were high places. There were groves. Some worshipped idols. Some worshipped Jehovah in the groves. But they weren't supposed, weren't supposed to worship in the temple. But they wanted the old ways. And the, the, listen, the people of the land, that area, Phoenicia and Canaan, that land that were there when the Jews came back, Land of milk and honey, right? When they came, those people had established high places and groves for their worship. It was all idol worship for them. So the Jews would take their true worship of God, but they'd go to the groves and the high places. What? So what did Jehoshaphat do? No, they're all gone. Every trace of false worship is gone. Every. Why would he do that? Well, he's. He's going to do everything according to God's will. God's will is you worship the way I told you to. So I've given you directions. That's the way you'll do it. Okay, let's look at letter D. Levites and priests were dispatched throughout the nation to teach all that God commanded. So again, what we see, it's all centered around God, right? Remember who the Levites and the priests are, that they're the holy people. They're the ones that are responsible for knowing the Bible, studying the Bible, discussing the Bible, teaching the Bible among their own people. But now we have Jehoshaphat, five generations removed from David, having to go and re-educate all these people. All these people need to know what? Just one thing. What are they going to teach? All that God commanded. Listen, I want you to think about now. I went to public schools. You probably went to public school. My kids went to but I want you to think about something. That's the one thing that is never taught in public schools, mm -hmm. the ways of God. <laughs> interesting. It's interesting. You say, well, it shouldn't be. <clears throat> I'll throw this out there. And if you have a question, ask me afterwards. There is no such thing as a wall of separation between church and state. Amen. That's right. It is not law. Right. It was written in a letter to a Baptist preacher by Thomas Jefferson. It has no force of law. It was never put in the Constitution. It says this, the government shall make no law establishing or taking away from religion. Right. Hands off totally. Right. You worship or don't. That's right. The government touches it not. That's all it is. There's nothing right. else there. But what we have with um, foolish folks is you can't say it Teach it, think it, be it, pray it, none of it. But this is what Jehoshaphat did. He taught all that God commanded. Where? The whole country. All right, let's continue. Verse E, or, uh, number E, lettering. Peace and prosperity resulted. God's blessings. The kingdom was established. I want you to think about what we just said here. We have a young man, he takes over the kingship of, of a nation. He centers it around one thing. And what happens? Blessings and the establishment. We saw the, here in verse, um, up at the top in verse 9 and 10, that there was peace. There was even peace. The war stopped. It, 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 the war didn't stop because he fought more and more wars. The war stopped because he did what he was supposed to do. Makes me think that peace comes from our God. Mm -hmm. yes. I didn't right. say don't get a strong military because there's foolish people all around the world. I didn't say that. What I'm saying is, hmm, have we missed a boat? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, might have. If God's not the center, can peace ever come? Probably not. The Bible says it's not, right? Okay. Let's, let's continue on now. Now look, star, a star right below letter E. This brief description of actions taken by Jehoshaphat are summarized in these words, and his heart was lifted up in the ways of the Lord. Now, now that means something a little different than what we would say. I want you to think about this. Described as being lifted up in the ways of the Lord, it means this, he took courage in God's ways. In other words, here's the deal. 
This is what God says, and I know it very well because I was taught it as a child there under Asa, my dad, and the priest taught me, and I know these things, and this is what God says, and this is what I, I will adhere to that alone. I don't need anything else. Is that not courage? Yeah. I mean, think about it today. I'm not trying to make fun of today. We need to pray about today. But um, being, having your heart lifted up in the Lord, that which guided Jehoshaphat in ruling this nation was of God alone, and his actions revealed this. <clears throat> So, is that true? It is action, and I show there's just some actions. There's not all. There's way more there in that part of Second Corinthians Chronicles. I just read some of some of, of, of those to you. So his actions revealed that he was guided of God alone. Here's the question, and here's where we're going to get around to our 1776. Was this a truth here in 1776? In other words, did the men that framed our government have that same guidance? One God alone, courage in one thing alone, God alone. He rules alone, nothing can befall us. It's bad. It'll all be of God, right? So here's the, that's the question. So let's let's read some quotes. These are just quotes. There's a gazillion of these quotes. I just looked it up online, to be honest with you, and I got the ones I liked. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, it took about three minutes. <laughs> All right, so, so right down below there. There is historical proof that America's founding fathers should be similarly described as Jehoshaphat. That's exciting because we talk about America being a Christian nation. Surely we would say Jehoshaphat. He's a Christian ruler. There were no Christians in America. You know, a believing ruler. First quote, religion. Now, now look, when it says religion, I know Baptists say this. Ain't no religion. Well, it, there is. Religion, religion is how you act. I, I know that Jesus is our, is our belief. Everything is around you. Everything. Complete in Jesus. That's it, right? We are complete in him. But religion, in these instances, is talking about being a Christian. Sorry, that needs to do that. There are some writers that say the church in, in, the, in the Old Testament, in, in the, the church in the desert, when they were wandering, well, there was no church in the desert. We know when the church started, the day of Pentecost, right? So we can get offended by language and just understand it. We don't need to be offended. Religion. Let's see what George Washington, first quote. Religion and morality are the essential pillars of a civil society. Let, look at it just for a second. Pillars means <clears throat> the things upon which a society that works has to rest on this. Morals, which come really from religion. How do you know what's right and wrong in your life? It came originally from God, and they are absolutes. Our world says they're relative. Well, in this case, it's true what God says, but you know, he's wrong over here. He just blasphemed God. God's never wrong. Can't be. Um, so, what is necessary for the country to be there it must have morals, and it must have uh, religion. The next one is John Adams, second um, president. I believe he was the second president. I wrote this down and lost it. So. Anyway, I believe he may have been the vice president. Our Constitution was made for a moral and religious people. Sounds like a repeating record, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. That means this. Listen. What we have, what we have is freedom. Yes? We can only maintain freedom if we mind our own business. In other words, you take care of your morals. You take care of being honest. You stop being a cheat and a thief and a liar. 
and a swindler and a whatever else that's negative. In other words, if you take care of you, this means this. Speed limit says, this is going to get someone to Speed limit says 70 miles an hour. You have enough self discipline to go 70 miles an hour. Oh, boo. Why? <laughs> Are there other laws that you can just choose or pick and choose? Everything is. What this is saying is pick and choose to obey. What happens when the majority of the population just stops obeying the laws? We wouldn't have that in America, would we? <laughs> we would never have any buildings burned during the riots, and we wouldn't have people arrested and put in jail for two years before a trial. Those same people deny trial by jury, guaranteed in the Constitution of America. Who denied right, the judge? Right, right, right. Oh, we, that would never happen, right? No, it's happening. And what these men said is, what we are creating is this. Uh, we are creating a nation that requires religion and morality. It will not work otherwise. Franklin, I believe, Benjamin Franklin famously said, we have a republic if you can keep it. If you can keep it, men, men are evil. And you got to watch it, right? You and I are evil. You all, some of you are saved. I know most of you that, that I know. You've trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. You needed one. Yes. You are a sinner, and the wages of sin is death. But God has a gift for you. That's right. Yeah. Eternal life. That gift of God is eternal life. That's you right. believe what? That you're a sinner and you need what He did. What did He do? He paid what you what you owed. He went to the trial. You're found guilty because you have sinned. And you found guilty as you awaited sentence. Christ stood up and said, it's pain. But I don't know you. No, I know you. I paid for you. It's paid. So you're a Christian. But understand this. Even a Christian can get so wrong in their ways that they're not obeying. There's no self-discipline. There's no self-control. We just do because we have freedom to do it. Right? Okay. Let's continue on. The Alexander Hamilton, for my thought, for my part, I sincerely esteem the Constitution, a system which, without the finger of God, look at there, we're talking about, were these forefathers, here was the question, there's historical proof that America's founding fathers should be described as Joseph at. For my part, says Hamilton, I sincerely esteem the Constitution, a system which, without the finger of God, never could have been suggested and agreed upon by such a diversity of interests. <clears throat> what is he saying? Guided the men as they sat down month after month in these sweating, nasty clothes, and they had to close the windows off so people couldn't hear what they were talking about. They tried to keep everything secret. They're creating a new government. They had the Articles of Confederation, which were too weak, so they're doing a constitutional government now. This is years after 1776. And they sweated that thing out, and for months they went, and there were near fights, and there were arguments, and there was prayers and songs, all kinds of stuff going on. And Hamilton says this, I was there, and I'm going to tell you this. God guided what we did. America is a Christian founded nation. On the back we see this. We're almost done. I'll go through it. <laughs> Were my voice trembling? Now, this is Pat Henry. He's, he's from right over here. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Oh, I can't think of the name of it. St. John's. What? St. John's Church. St. John's Church. Well, not John's Church. Yeah, yeah. 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 there's a. The guys that are in my fireplace, does. Oh, I can't think of him. Anyway, he's from over there. <laughs> Here's Patrick. Patrick, so he can get away with work. Man, L listen to this. He's talking about dying. Were my soul trembling on the wing of eternity? Were this hand freezing to death? Were my voice choking with the last struggle? I would still, with the last gasp of that voice, implore you to remember the truth. God has given America to be free. Yes. It is when a people forget God that tyrants form chains. If he's right, so would Jehoshaphat was right. If God's the centerpiece, they have nothing can happen to this nation. 
understand that, right? And God is the centerpiece. Several years ago, this is uh, uh, another guy, at, at Alexis de Tocqueville. Several years ago, in, several years into the American experiment, in the 1830s, a historian from France visited America, America to get a first-hand view of our nation and wrote these words. Not until I went to the churches of America and heard her pulpits flame with righteousness did I understand the secret of her genius and power. America is great because America is good. And if America ever ceases to be good, America will cease to be great. Yeah. And, and when I say experiment, I want you to understand that this is the first time ever this happened. And we're here 250 years later. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And every force in the world is trying to make this country fall. In any mind. But the answers are never going to change. Jehoshaphat illustrated, so do our forefathers. They illustrated. And, and he comes over. That's why I said he wanted to see. Look, look nobody's ever done this. These people are crazy. Nobody had ever heard of what America did. And so this young man, he had been in government in France. He was a failure in politics. So he became a historian. And he said, I, I just want to see what in the world is going on over there because they're, they're doing good. And that's what he wrote. And then, then look at that last sentence. Liberty cannot be established more, without morality, nor morality without faith. And we see again, he sees it. He sees, he's seen things he's never seen before, and those are the reasons why America was established. And then we see from Scripture. We won't take a lot of time on this, but I want to hit a high point here from Scripture. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. That means government. For there is no power but of God. But does that mean that government is from God? Yes. Yeah. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power of government, resisteth the ordinance of God, they that resist shall receive unto themselves damnation. Now, now look, this is God's plan. You're going to say, but there's some horrible rules. Yeah, there are, but look, here's God's plan. But the rest of it, you got to read it all. Yeah. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's right. So, so we'll finish a second. That means that God established government to reward the good, to uh, encourage the good. Yes, it wasn't. It wasn't because uh, man wanted a government. Man wants this. You tell me this. No, no. There was a reason for the government. Is is for. I'm going to get rid of the evil. The government should do away with evil. I want you to think about our government today again. And you can think about not just today, but for a long time now. Has there been evil allowed to exist and to even be promoted oh, yeah. by our government? Yes. Yes. We're seeing more today, maybe. But I'm going to tell you, it's been around a long, long time. And there's a reason. We have it centered all on our Savior. All on the Savior. Okay. As Jehoshaphat did. Do, will thou not be, then be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt help praise in the same. So we see even Scripture. Again, we come back to Scripture. We, we see the same thing. A government that was established 1776 and then on in the 1880s with the Constitution. Those who were there said it was of God. Those who were there said it must have been of God. Those who were there said it must be moral. It must be good. It must be clean and, and pure. The, the government, and we see here that that government was indeed established by God. There's no way the men of diverse interests could have ever written what they wrote in their constitution. And then we see just a few words here. This is not the very beginning of the declaration, but these are the ones that we always remember talking about godliness in this nation. We hold these truths to be self-evident. That means there is no argument. There are certain things that 
you don't even need to talk about because it's true. And then anybody that knows any, any different, uh, everybody knows this. In other words, self-evident. All men are created equal. You say, but wait a minute, what about the slaves? Yes, there were slaves, and they debated the fool out of slaves. Mm -hmm. The reason it wasn't included because they never passed the Constitution. It had to be ratified by all the state, all of the colonies. And so they put it off. But boy, it got attacked in just a few years, didn't it? <laughs> First nation that fought a war within itself to eradicate the filth of slavery. And even the slave owner said, it's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. You've got to stop, 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 stop. The whole world was engaged in slavery and had been. But here's their, this is, listen, this is their goal statement. This is what we believe as a nation before we create a nation. This is what we believe. All men are created equal. Notice the word created. Some of you believe in Darwinism because you don't know any better. I can prove it. But you Google it. Proof that Darwin lied. It's a, it's a, it's a, he admits it. Uh, it's taught in public schools as fact. Still, still, for anyone to believe that I came from, well, you, I could have, <laughs> come from swine, that became an amoeba, that became a pigeon, and then a bullet, and then a man. You're foolish. Sorry, you are. It's wrong. Can't be proven, never will be, because it's wrong. It's not, there's no, ever. Since when can this species become another species? This has scales, this one has feathers, this one has hair. <laughs> Cannot be. It's an impossibility. But if you'll read it, you'll know. Some of the leading scientists in the world, history of the world, the deeper they got into their field, said, I started this believing, disbelieving in any God. The further I got into my field of study, I realized only God can explain anything. <laughs> There's books out there, read them. If you believe in Darwinism, they'll set you straight. Or you can just have faith. Created evil. And look, endowed by the Creator. That means this. When you came out of one, you had this. Certain unalienable un un rights that can never be taken away. You, Every human being endowed with these, including the slaves. Every human being endowed with this. Certain unalienable rights. Life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, take a look at the word, that means something. These, these words. That se to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men. Doesn't that sound like Romans that we just read? Mm -hmm. To secure the God-given rights, governments are made. God made the governments to secure your rights, and that's the way they should be. And then we end uh, deriving the just power from the consent of government, and for the support of this declaration, for the firm reliance on the protection of the divine providence, there we go again, we, we pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. And we see the reliance of protecting the divine uh, providence. We see the same thought back <clears throat> with Jehoshaphat when he said, <clears throat> when his, city, his heart was lifted up in the ways of the Lord. In other words, he took courage in the ways of the Lord. See that? We, we firmly rely on God's protection for, for this. Yes. This undertaking. We're, we're going to establish this with these beliefs. And God's going to see to it that it happens. Firm reliance on this. Lift it up in the ways of the Lord. I want to say one word and we'll stop. I know it's too long, but anyway. Talk about a nation being lifted up in the ways of the Lord. But I, I want to say to you before we go, it's for you and me too. Right? That's right. Now, ought we not be lifted up in, in, listen, not in the ways of the world. The world wants everything from you. And boy, it's attractive. There's some stuff out there. There's money and stuff and lust, power. There's stuff out there, right? But couldn't we, if you're a Christian, do this? Say it every day to the Lord. I, I want to be lifted up in your ways, just your ways. I don't want anything else. Take away those things. I want them. You need them.
repeat it often enough to where you believe it too. Mm-hmm. Right? Let's pray. Lord, we do thank you for our nation. So thankful that we live in, in this in this country. It's it's got its flaws. Oh Lord God, it, it is, but the, the goals are without rival, that they're without comparison to any other nation on the face of the earth. That we would, we would acknowledge our Creator we, and we would rely on our Creator and we would look to the Creator in all things and we would become a good and moral people, Lord, so that you could establish us or establish us even longer than we have. And we'll praise you for all that you do in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.